everyone. I'm Laura, Laura Schreffler, the editor-in-chief of Hope Media Group. And today we have an amazing, beautiful day of Prosecco tasting ahead with Chrissy Brinkley and Wine Access. <laughs> so before um, we introduce Chrissy, I want to introduce Vanessa Conlin, the head of wine at Wine Access. Vanessa was head of sales and marketing for several of Napa's most prestigious estates, including Aridia Wines, Donna Estates, and Realm Cellars. Previously, she was a retail buyer and wine bar wine director in New York. She's president of the board for the Jameson Animal Rescue Ranch, holds WSET diploma, and was a recipient of the Nikki Singer Memorial Scholarship from the International Wine Center. Vanessa became the 52nd MW in the United States in February of 2020, and there are only 57 in total. So as you can imagine, we're lucky to have her knowledge here today. So hi, Vanessa. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much. And thank you to Oat Living for, for having me. It's really an, an honor. And I'm very excited to, to be tasting um, these three Proseccos today. So I uh, had the distinct honor of meeting Christy Brinkley uh, recently. And I was absolutely blown away, not only by um, the delicious Proseccos um, of Bellissima, but just by her, her knowledge and her sort of infectious joy about kind of life and enjoying the moment. And I can't think of a better way to enjoy the moment than with a beautiful glass or three of, of Prosecco. <laughs> so I feel like <laughs> she needs no introduction, but I will read a, a brief bio um, about, about Christy. Uh, since being discovered by a photographer in Paris while still in art school, Christy has appeared on over 500 magazine covers worldwide, served as a spokeswoman for CoverGirl, starred in Broadway's Chicago the Musical as Roxy Hart, and performed in television and in film. She's a partner in SBLA Beauty, wrote the New York Times bestselling book of beauty secrets, Timeless Beauty, and is responsible for the Prosecco line Bellissima with its Botticelli inspired bottles, which we will be discussing today. Christy, it's so great to see you. How are you? <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. I'm thrilled to be here. And I enjoyed meeting you too the other night. That was a great <laughs> event. <laughs> Totally agree. Um, well, if it's okay with you, Christy, I thought I might just sort of set the stage a little bit in terms of, you know, the wines that we're going to be discussing today um, and sort of where we are in the world. So, you know, okay. Prosecco is um, a sparkling wine from Italy. For anyone at home who, who uh, you know, hasn't had a Prosecco today, this is just a, a little background. So um, it's made in the northeast corner of Italy in the regions of Veneto or Friuli and centered around the city of Treviso, which is about 25 miles north of Venice. Um, so the first sparkling Prosecco was made in 1868, but winemaking traditions of the region actually date back to Pliny the Elder in Roman times. Uh, so it's made from a grape called Galera. Um, before 2009, the grape was just referred to also as Prosecco, but it was officially changed to avoid any confusion. So it's Galera, and that's a white grape. Um, and in 2020, much to um, my excitement, the laws changed to actually allow rosé to Prosecco to be made by blending 10 to 15% uh, of Pinot Noir. So unlike champagne, uh, the bubbles in Prosecco uh, come from re-fermenting in a pressurized tank before bottling, as opposed to re-fermenting in the bottle itself as done uh, in champagne. And the resulting style is really puts a beautiful focus on the fruit itself, um, really gives it a, a wonderful purity in the glass. So that's just a little bit, there's so much to discuss here, which I know we'll be getting into, <laughs> Christy, with you. Um, but before we start, can you tell us what, what, what was the inspiration behind Bellissima and how did you decide to, to start this line? Well, I was I was just really, really lucky, I think, because one of the most distinctive things about our Prosecco and wines is that they are all organic and uh, vegan. And so my partners, when they had discovered this very wonderful vineyard uh, that has never had chemicals on it, they said the organic messaging has to be important. And uh, we want to partner with somebody who really, you know, really understands the organic message. And uh, my partner, Rich's wife, Ro, said, I've been following Christy Brinkley on uh, <laughs> Facebook, and uh, this is going back. And she's always talking about her organic garden and how important it is to go organic. Yeah. And 
So they came to me and they had several wines for me to taste and Proseccos and, and um, asked me if I would be interested in partnering with them. And we sat and we sipped and, uh, and I was really enamored with the idea from the get go because um, I've always loved a good glass of bubbly and whether it was champagne or Prosecco, to me, when it's sparkling, it means a celebration. And um, I'm a firm believer in celebrating, finding as many opportunities to celebrate as possible. <laughs> so um, we determined, we, we started at that meeting to narrow down to what we thought were the most distinctive and interesting wines and, um, and the other thing that came out, like really caught my attention was the zero sugar. That uh, I was amazed to think that you can create a delicious zero sugar wine or Prosecco and, uh, and have it taste so just bursting with flavor. And so, I was, I mean, I was just in from then and, and I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, this partnership. I, I love everything about it. Going to the vineyard, uh, I love Italy. I love the region, you know, it sits at the base of the Alps. So you see the mountains, you can pop down to Venice in a 20 minute drive and it's just a gorgeous region. And I oh. think you feel the beauty in every bottle. Absolutely. Well, I, I really have such tremendous respect for organic farming. And, you know, I think, of course, aside from what we're putting in our body, it really just shows such a firm commitment to the overall health, you know, of not just that vineyard, but, you know, to the earth itself. So I really applaud you for, for being so passionate about that. Absolutely. That is it, it, really the fact that this, wine represents to me a better choice for your body, but also for our planet. It makes me so proud because really going organic is something that we can all do. And um, it's something that makes such a huge difference every step of the way, you know, from um, just the, the, the runoff from the fields into the streams, down into the ocean, it's, it's got a real ripple effect in everything. So, and same thing with our, with our bodies to be able to avoid, sometimes there's up to 57 chemicals that can be on a grape. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, what is deemed safe today is often discovered not to be as safe as they thought right. tomorrow. Right. So I am very proud of the fact that we have all organic grapes and uh, that our vineyards are clean and that um, we're also certified vegan, which is something that when I first heard that the wine was vegan, I was kind of like, oh, of course it's vegan. I mean, nobody puts meat in wines. And then I discovered actually they do filter wines through animal parts. And so trace amounts of animal parts can be found in your wine. And I'm a lifelong vegetarian, uh, aspiring and part-time vegan. Uh, and so it really, uh, really is very important to me that my wines are certified vegan. Yes, I think to your point, Christy, I think a lot of people, um, don't, don't realize those certain things like egg whites. Um, there are certain products that come from other animals yeah, that are used to, 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 to filter um, or to find, to find wines. Um, well, I'm getting thirsty talking. <laughs> about <laughs> yes. So I feel like we should, we should at least um, get started with, you mentioned the zero sugar um, and it probably makes sense to start, yes. to start with that one. So I have this beautiful bottle in front of me. Um, we were speaking about organics. I see right on the bottle, of course, it says made with um, organic grapes. Um, but the, the, the bottle itself um, and the artwork is, is so gorgeous with the, the Botticelli. It's, so uh, what was the inspiration yes. for that? 
you know, I, uh, I actually, I actually never set out to be a model. I set out to be an artist and I was studying art in Paris uh, when I got sidetracked with this modeling career. So Rich and Roe knew about my, uh, my art and they said, Christy, we want you to design the bottles. So I set out with all my old, you know, champagne bottles or whatever, just literally painting on them to start getting a feel for the shape and, and how that would work. And I was painting different bottles for the different, different wines and Prosecco's and, and uh, hold on. Oh, here we go. Get ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite sound. <laughs> yes. I do. I love that sound. It's just a happy sound that is truly an exclamation point on your celebration. So um, anyway, so, so I'm painting away and one day Rich calls me up and he goes, you know, Chrissy, I forgot to tell you, we own the advertising rights to Botticelli's Venus, if that makes a difference to you. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> How did you do that? Yeah. And he said, you know, it was available. I picked it up. So I did a loose rendition of Botticelli's Venus because uh, we could have actually placed that gorgeous painting right on the bottle, but it might've been a little too serious, you know? I wanted mm -hmm. our Prosecco to feel celebratory and fun and, you know, so our bottles are colorful and, and we break up the information on the back, which you can probably see better on my yellow bottle because I wanted, I wanted it to feel like milestones in life because life is about celebrating each milestone in your life, whether it's a promotion, a baby, a wedding, a, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a friend drops in. <laughs> You've got to take those opportunities to celebrate. And, um, and so the goddess Venus, the goddess of love and sex and bounty and all beautiful things became our you know our purse our our label our brand because um that's what it's all about is celebrating all these wonderful things all life's beautiful moments and so shall we taste it i think so. here's well, to those beautiful cheers. moments cheers. 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 beautiful moments I love I love what that you that you have that sentiment about kind of opening a bottle of of bubbles because I agree I think you know there's people say like oh I have to wait for the right moment or, or the right occasion I say open it and it becomes the occasion <laughs> absolutely absolutely it makes a, a an otherwise normal occasion more memorable and exactly and since we also have our bambinis our little mm -hmm. bottles which uh you know, really make it easy. You know, sometimes I understand the thing about a, a big bottle of bubbly. You think, well, you know, I'm not gonna certainly drink the whole thing. If you don't have enough people, you worry about leaving some behind. But with our bambinis, you know, you can pop one and sip it while you're cooking and have the other half of it while you're eating the food. It's the perfect size, the very, very portable for um, any time that you would think of throwing drinks in a cooler, you can also now grab a, a, a nice bubbly and pop it in there and drink it right out of the bottle by adding one of our sippers. So look at that. This I makes love it really, isn't that great? <laughs> it's so cute, yes. These, these keep it from like spilling all over the place. It sort of doles out the perfect size little sip and uh, makes them so portable and, and uh, I just love it. I mean, I live out here on the east end of Long Island and we're always running out. We've got like a little boat that we putter around in wow. and I, these are just so great when you've got a group of friends and throw them in the ice box, throw in the little sippers and off you go. And these are reusable too, by the way. They're not one-time use throwaway. They're they're they go in the washing machine. They're wow reusable. Yeah, they're 
So fun. Um, well, I'd love to hear your thoughts since we have this in our glass kind of on, you know, what do you like to pair this with? Do you think it should, it's just fine, you know, just sipping by itself or when do you like to enjoy yeah. the zero sugar? Well, we have two zero sugars and this zero sugar is currently my new, I know you're not supposed to have favorites, you know, <laughs> uh, like it's like not, but this is my new baby and it's like, the, it's just like so delicious and I just love it just as is you know I really love this one just right out of the bottle like this that's my favorite way to consume it um, and I have another zero sugar that's a white wine uh, and it is I think it's perfect because Prosecco is such a great drink to make all the trendy drinks with, you know? Mm -hmm. And I love making them with my white wine zero sugar because that one, uh, it instantly reduces the amount of sugar that's in your cocktail because when you add the syrups or the fruits or whatever, you're adding back in sugar, but it's gonna be so much less than if you were using a fully sugared wine to mix it with. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I, you know, I, I'm just realizing, realizing I should have mentioned for anyone watching at home, you can drop questions in the chat well, or the Q and A and Laura will uh, be asking those or addressing those at the, towards the end of the oh, session. Good. So anything that comes up along the way, please, please don't hesitate. Um, I think this is so delicious. It's like crisp and refreshing. And we talked about a little at the beginning, um, you know, the, the way that Prosecco is made. And I think it does, again, put such a, a beautiful focus on this sort of pure fruit expression. So I think, I think it's really extraordinary. Yeah. Laura, what do you, what do you <laughs> I dropped my, my <laughs> ear, my ear things just will not stay in today. <laughs> There, but, Laura, yeah. I know you're tasting it as well. What, uh, what, what do you think, Laura? I think it is so light and refreshing. It's a perfect, perfect summer Prosecco. Absolutely. Honestly, really enjoying it. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is, you know, we, it's the perfect social drink too, because it's not so laden with alcohol that it's going to make you sleepy or whatever. It, it's the perfect amount that just makes you a little bubbly, like the drink, mm -hmm. and uh, you can sip along and feel great. And I think that the fact that there's less sugar in it makes it less likely that it'll give you a headache or anything like that. Um, and I think that, um, that for, for instance, my other ones that you mix, like I love to do things like um, just, taking some fruit and some ice, throw, throwing them in the blender and then putting them about up to here in the glass. And then when you pour in the Prosecco, it's kind of like a little explosion on top. You know, it's just, it's beautiful. It's festive, it's delicious. And you can make it very healthy by just doing it with fresh fruit and ice. But you can also do all of the, the trendy drinks like um, with the elderflower. I have some aperitivos as well. I have a aperitivo citrus, which is very much like the Aperol. Um, and I'll make a, a spritz like that. And it's fabulous. And uh, elderflower is really great with Prosecco. And um, any kind of like grapefruit, just a little bit of grapefruit mm. juice. Um, and a little bit of the zero sugar in it. It's, it really lends itself watermelon. If you just take a slice of watermelon, throw it in the blender and then put half a glass of watermelon and half a glass, this would be amazing with the watermelon in it. Oh, delicious. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to try that later. I, I I also thought maybe it would be fun to point out that I, you know, you're using a flute. I have just a, a wine glass, you know, we have the topper, so you could just drink it right out of the bottle. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but um, do you, do you suggest a flute or for, for enjoying your Prosecco or is I, a regular wine glass know, okay? I, um, I, 
I mean, I really love the idea of the wine glass because it holds a little bit more. Um, <laughs> you know, and um, but I think it's kind of fun to to mix up the shape of the glasses. Like sometimes I even love a coupe, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because the coupes are so almost they almost remind me of like a throwback shape. Like if you're in a a bustier dress or something, and then you have <laughs> that coupe. It just looks so, I don't know, just so chic and uh, and very pretty and feminine, you know? Yes. So, um, but like a flute, if you, sometimes it's great to um, put a little bit of simple syrup and um, lychees in a flute so that they're floating up in a narrow flute. And it's just, so actually, instead of putting anything in it, if you get lychees in a can, and you put just a tiny little bit of the syrup from the can and then the lychees like drifting up the flute. It's so elegant and beautiful. It's, and tastes so good. Yeah. I do so, think there's okay. something so yeah. beautiful about the shape of the flute. Uh, yes. Very vis yes. visually pleasing. Yes. I'm, you yes. know, I'm very, um, studious about wine so I often just put everything in it in you know in an all-purpose so it kind of takes out any um, variables for me but um, I think it looks very beautiful in, in the flute for sure yes yes I agree um, it's I don't know I like I, I play around with the shapes depending on what I'm putting in it as well like if I have a sprig of rosemary that would look pretty up a mm. tall narrow glass or um, if it's a drink with an orange stuck on the side, like if I'm making like a sprizz type thing, I'll use a big balloon, you know, like a red, Ooh. red wine glass mm. and put tons of ice in there and, you know, add the, the orange on the side and really play up the volume and that beautiful orange shape inside something that almost looks like an orange, you know? Oh, I uh, like it. Yeah. So, or like a Negroni Spagliato, you know, which, which is really delicious with Prosecco mixed in it is um, really fun just in a, like a, what do they call those? Uh, tumbler, right? Mm -hmm. So. And, and I love that in Italy often too, you know, even the sort of the most, uh, you know, at the winery, their most expensive wines, you'll, they'll just pour it in a tumbler. <laughs> yeah, yes. I've seen that before too in France, like little tumblers with the extra heavy thick glass on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I do love a stim to keep the, keep the coldness, you know, keep your fingers from warming the wine. So I think, and a little tip also is to keep, mm -hmm. uh, if you have space in your freezer, to keep the glasses in the freezer mm -hmm. so they're really cold. I love doing that as well. So I'm curious. So what was your first, what's your first memory of, of wine? Was it when you were in Paris studying art or growing up in your house? Did, you, did, your, did your family enjoy wine or where did, where did you find this passion? I think it was that movie Gigi uh, when I was a little girl and I was watching, I always was fascinated with, um, with uh, French and Fra like I went to a French school and I remember the song, the day they invented champagne. You remember that whole song? Yes, I thought yes. that was just such a cool song. And so it opened up my, you know, I was thinking about champagne and um, I don't know that it just, you know, sometimes music can influence your uh, perception of things. And I just thought it seemed so elegant and exciting and uh and you know I have a question for you Vanessa which is don't you think that Prosecco Prosecco's reputation has morphed over the years like yes. uh, oh dear now that's the one I really need that one <laughs> for, for my sound thank you oh they're in the wrong ears that's why uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay there you go. That should work better. Yes. Um, but I feel like um, many years ago, 
Prosecco was almost syrupy, sugary. Yeah. And, uh, and now Prosecco is, uh, comes in, uh, a, it feels clean and crisp and yes. not at all syrupy, not at all overly sugared. And certainly our zero sugar would never taste like that. But even our pink Prosecco is absolutely delightful and still so clean tasting and a brightness that is the antithesis of a syrupy kind of wine. You're exactly right. And actually I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that you brought up that point because yes, it, Prosecco, the style absolutely has changed. And for anyone who maybe hasn't had it in a long time to Christy's point, you know, a lot of what was in the market, particularly in, in the US market was, was very yeah. sweet. It could be kind of cloying and heavy and you miss the sort of bright charm of what it, what it should be, but really beautiful Proseccos. I mean, the ones that we're tasting to here today are, 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 are dry. And I think also it goes back to where we almost started this conversation about vineyards, about location and, and the treatment of the vineyards, because um, it, let's say in a, a, a site that isn't as high quality or it's not well-maintained or farmed, sometimes sugar would be added to the wines to kind of cover up, you know, that, that it, wasn't oh. a, a, it wasn't a great expression, but sites like where you're farming, Christy, and with the care yeah. of organic farming, you don't need that uh, to enjoy yeah. the wine. It's, it's beautiful as it is without that added. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we have a very unique terroir at our vineyard because we, uh, we have the river runs through it and it leaves behind these river stones that are entwined with our vines. And, you know, you see them at the roots and at the base and they, they retain the heat of the sun during the day. And at night, they continue to warm the vines and deliver that, you know, nice solar heat throughout the night. And our grapes, I think, reflect that and have such a juicy, delicious flavor. Well, speaking of delicious, I, I, I'm dying to try then the Prosecco Brut um, next oh. in the, the lineup. I'm going to... Yes. to to pour well, this so which this one. which was was this the first was this the first prosecco that you released yes this is this is our true prosecco brut doc and for folks at home doc designates that it's the, from the region uh where the prosecco is grown like uh and it is truly a true delicious I think it's an outstanding Prosecco, truly. I, I try to compare it to, you know, other brands and I try and like do like my own little blind tastings. And I just, I just love this one. I think it's so delicious if I can get it open. <laughs> well, I have it's, it open. It, it is delicious. Yes. Isn't and, it? Um, it's, it's delicious. It's beautiful. This is a wine that, um, that I'm very proud to carry at, at Wine Access. This is this is on our website if you're looking for a place to to find and enjoy this. But no, it's a, it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful wine. And again, we we started with the the zero sugar <laughs> rosé. This is this is I think what you know when people first discover prosecco. This is more what they're used to since the rosé prosecco is is newer in terms of um, um, yeah. being allowed. And and it's isn't it um, isn't it interesting that it took so long you know to actually have those changes made to the law I think you know sometimes I speak to people and they say wait there there are laws about about wine um, I know <laughs> I thought that was so interesting mm -hmm. that they have like a consortium that makes all these decisions in Italy and uh and we had heard rumblings like that maybe they were going to approve of the pink Prosecco, and uh, and so um, we were very very excited to hear that they, you know, when they did approve it, and we were ready, we were ready. I think we were one of the 
quickest ones out of the box to um, be able to say, we've got the pink Prosecco. But our brute though is, I just wanted to cheers you. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers at home. At home. <laughs> Remember to post any questions at home if you'd like Laura to cover them at, at the oh. end. Um, and so what about that this is wine, Christy? Do you like to, are there certain food pairings or cocktails with this wine that you like to make? I think that this one really literally goes with everything. I love it with, um, I mean, li I mean, literally, I think it goes with everything. It stands on its own as, you know, pouring it for a cocktail. It also is perfect complement to a dinner with, you know, I've got all three of my kids home. Nobody eats the same thing at night, you know, everybody's yeah. sailors, a vegan, gluten-free, uh, Alexa's a vegetarian, uh, Jack is, you know, like whatever he, whatever is set in front of him, he'll eat it, <laughs> um, you know, um, usually pasta or whatever, but, you know, so everybody's eating all their different menus, but everybody agrees that this goes with everything. So it's, it's, I just think it's, oh. I think it's a good point to make uh, um, because yes, I think often um, you'll see, oh, it's to start, it's just to start a meal or it's before the meal, but, but sparkling wine, Prosecco, Champagne can, can pair beautifully. I think um, particularly sometimes with salty foods, it can pair very oh, well. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, I love um, salty foods. Me, me so. too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't have a sweet tooth, but I, I definitely enjoy salt. So, um, so that's, I think that's a great oh. pairing. And um, my, my colleagues at work sometimes make fun of me for this, but I'm such a big fan of sparkling wine that um, I often like to like, end, instead of dessert, I'll end a meal um, with sparkling wine instead, because it's so refreshing. It kind of cleanses your palate, yes. you know? Yes, I agree. I, that's a good, that's a good thing to do. But if you end it with the zero sugar, you could have a few bites of the dessert. As that's, well. true. <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, I mean, so, oh, yeah, I always see. used to do, I always used to say it's a either or, you know, like, okay, am I going to be tempted by the dessert that I know they're going to have at that restaurant or should I have the wine? But it's kind of like you can have the cake and eat it too with this. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm curious too. So um, let's say when you're when you're in Italy, when you're you know visiting the vineyards, or you're around the the winemaking process for this, are there what are the steps along the way where you kind of jump in and say, I have an opinion about this, or how does that relationship you know with with your growers and with the winemakers? Well, I mean, I I'm always you know because I come into it with sort of fresh eyes of well, why can't we do this? You know, why couldn't we do that? Because I don't know the answers yet. But like, uh, there is something called, let me think of what it's called. Um, it, it, the translation in English is something like uh, a storm in a glass. And it's mm. the Prosecco before it gets the, uh, before it goes the second round in the bat, profundo, profundo, profundo. No. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, Not in relation to winemaking, honestly. So this, okay, is, this is okay. a lesson it's, for me. It is really delicious. It is, um, it, it's kind of foamy and it's totally delicious but you would have to decant it, right? To let the sediment, because the sediment, it's all in there. But if you, if you, even if you pour it in a glass and you just let the sediment go down to the bottom and then drink, that's what I was doing. I was tasting it at the different stages. And I said, wow, this is fabulous. And it's called, uh, uh, I believe it was, profundo uh and it and it is it doesn't have 
It has zero sulfites. It is uh, absolutely like creamy. Like the texture is like uh -oh. this creamy deliciousness. And I said, why can't we just bottle it in this stage, in this profundo stage as well? And you know, they're 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 looking into it, like if that is something that we can do or whatever. But um, it is something that's very delicious. And when you drive around the countryside to different little vineyards and stuff, sometimes they will offer you that that taste and so, uh, of that profundo part. And it's I. I think I know what you're talking about now. It's um because it's 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 bottled on the lees or it's still in contact with the lees, right? So it's a little it's a little cloudy. It's um, yes, it is. Yes. So um yes, yeah, so for for those at home, so um lees, you know, for fermentation, basically the sort of cliff note is um, yeast eats the sugars and grapes, and the yeah. byproducts are you know alcohol and CO two. And though, but when these yeasts, they basically sacrifice themselves for our pleasure because they, they die during this process and they'll um, sort of um, fall out of the wine or settle at the bottom. And we call that the lees. Um, so it's yeah. these, you know, dead yeast cells that doesn't sound very romantic, but actually they're kind of <laughs> magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're kind of magical though because they do they can impart um, I think Christy was was using the word like it's creaminess or they can give this sort of like silky texture to wine um, when they're in contact so um, so I, yes I, I now I understand uh, what you're describing but yes it was really good I really <laughs> enjoyed it and I thought that would be a unique thing and I think that people would enjoy decant you know the whole process can be part of like I'm going to decant it we're going to allow the you know it to settle and then we're going to pour it and just have this creamy one I just think it would be a whole fun thing to do like you a fun kind of wine experience Yes, and and I'm glad you actually mentioned decanting because something I, I I also like to do sometimes is actually decant sparkling wine. I don't know if you ever. I never know if you ever yeah. do, do that. Um, so it, it, a tip if you're doing this at home is pour just a little in the decanter first and sort of coat the inside because then when you pour the rest, it won't it won't bubble uh, too much out, out outside oh. of the decanter. But sometimes um, you know to kind of open it up if you want to kind of you know give it a little sort of pop of energy you can uh, actually decant a you know a prosecco yeah. or, or a champagne so oh, sometime when you're <laughs> give, that, <laughs> give that a try um but but laura who's on with us as well of course i know that you also have this in your in your glass the prosecco brute so i was just curious your thoughts on it I actually think that this is my favorite thus far because I do think it goes with everything. It is so smooth, but at the same time, it has like these really rich notes to me and I'm very much enjoying yeah. it. Oh, good. I'm loving your reviews. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I am please. I'm loving your Prosecco. So hand to hand. Yay, <laughs> exclamation yay. point, exclamation point, Christy. Right, no, the best way to be. <laughs> Christy likes to speak with exclamation points, so this yes. is the best way to drink. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Christy, you mentioned at the beginning this kind of you know finding finding joy or finding celebrations, you know, in in this small moment. So, you know, what's your advice to someone, you know, to to be able to start incorporating that in, into their daily life as well? Well. I think it just starts with being in the moment and being really grateful for something around you. I mean, I know that not every day is perfect and I know you're not always in a beautiful place, but there's always, there's always a whole list of things to be grateful for. And when you start making that the focus of your day instead of the things that aren't going well, the things that are. Yeah. You will find invariably you will, it'll lift your mood 
and you may just find yourself in the mood to celebrate. <laughs> so I think it really starts. I think that all good things start with gratitude. I love that. That's great advice. Um, so I'm curious too, um, you know, I, I read your bio at the beginning, you were on Broadway uh, yes. in Chicago. So what was that lifestyle like? Were you still able to kind of enjoy wine or, or did you have to sort of be very serious and focused the entire time to, to be able to perform that many times a week? <laughs> it was really funny because I, I kept my dressing room really well stocked with wines and Proseccos. I actually had a shelf around the top and I had glasses. I was always ready to pop a cork for the cast, you know, like on our night that uh, our, where we would have a day off the next day because we did eight shows a week. And there, you know, we, we may pour for other people and just take a sip is usually the way right. I would do it is for right. for everybody that came to see me that, you know, uh, it was so much fun after the show in my dressing room, but I didn't really partake. I was more like the <sighs> popping, yeah. pouring, and, uh, but I absolutely loved the experience. It is definitely something that I will raise a glass to for the rest of my life, yeah. you know, <laughs> to Broadway. I can't wait for everybody to be back on Broadway and to be yes. sitting in the theater again, uh, just uh, watching the magic unfold in front of me. Um, I will never get over the fact that I was lucky enough to share the stage with those magicians of, you know, th these people that just dedicate their life to singing and dancing and acting and putting it all out there with you know everything they've got every night for the audience and I loved it loved it wow yeah so you you're you're so um you have such a diverse set of, of skills and a lot of this though we're talking about art of course you know being on Broadway and performing and then of course studying art so sort of relating that back to wine itself, you know, do you, do you think that, that, you know, the making wine, is that more like an artistic endeavor or is it more scientific? I think it's, it's a place where the two meet together because you do have to know uh, certain things, but I think it, it ultimately it, you need the science and then you need the feel you know you need to mm. bring it to a place where you feel that that's it you know this is it's happening and this is great and uh and then you want to present it as well in a way that that continues your celebratory message you know and uh so I do think that it's a real mixture of art and science I, I think so too. I, I, I what I, I love about, um, there's so many things I love about wine, but, um, you know, one of the things I love about, you know, wine making in that, that process is to your point, there's, there's so much we know, there are things that we can, can control and predict. And then there's, there's sort of part of wine that, that is just instinct, right. You know, feeling, yeah. sensing, you know, using our, our taste buds and things that we can't put in a spreadsheet. <laughs> yes, um, yes. <laughs> and, so and true. Bringing, those, <laughs> bringing those all together, which for me is one of the sort of most, you know, fascinating romantic things, that uh, things about, about wine. Um, yeah. So we still have to taste uh, We have another wine in the lineup, of course, the uh, Prosecco Rose DOC. Yes, yes, oh, this is this. our latest one that thanks to that consortium suddenly deciding that, okay, we are going to allow pink Prosecco. And uh, you, do you know in your position exactly why they decided to, to allow that? Have you heard any? I believe, well, I believe it's because it actually was being made in the region, but couldn't actually be called Prosecco. So some people were making, uh -huh. 
you know, pink sparkling wine, but it was, you could just call it, Vino, you know, Vina Spumante, I think, you know, we couldn't actually uh -huh, call it. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, there, laws are slow to change. <laughs> that was definitely an exclamation point. Yes. <laughs> Two. That was a big exclamation point. But um, I think, you know, there it, it's, laws are slow to change, particularly about wine, because there's a lot of wine that is based on tradition, right? It's, you know, in some of these regions, we talked about Prosecco was eight, in the, you know, 18, what I say, 1826 or something. So it's, you know, there's decades and generations of people who've been making it the same way and sort of want to, you know, preserve and protect that. But then at some point, I think, you know, it, the smart consortiums um, are, will realize, you know, yes, but there's, there's so much also opportunity here. And, you know, Rosé um, and, you know, it was having such a, you know, such a big boom in the, in the market, yeah. and, you know, consumers just want, really desiring it. So I think it was, I think it was very smart um, to, to actually make that, to make that decision to, to allow it. So I think it was in response to the pretty consumers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful. That's so nice. So, and, and well, what about here's to all oh. of you, all of you at home <sighs> for joining us and and yes. both of you, this is like really a tasty one. This is like bottled, it's like bottled joy. It's just, it's really charming. Isn't it? Yes. I'm so thrilled with this mm. wine. I, I just think the, this, like, look at the persistent little bubbles, just like Mm -hmm. constantly fluttering up there it's so delish so you we have the bambino bottles oh. here the, the smaller bottles but let's say what what's your advice if someone you know opens opens a you know a 750 milliliter and they're not going to finish it I, I wouldn't know what that's like that doesn't happen in my house but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but if they didn't want to what what do you suggest um you know in terms of, of storing it or keeping it or you know how yeah, long would you, know, you hold on you know it's amazing because you can you can stick the you know bottle cap back on it the, the special made ones we sell them on our on our uh, website as well and um and it really does hold it I mean it lasts quite some time. Like I'll forget about it sometimes and then go back and go, oh, it's probably not any good. I'll just use it on my hair because they say it makes great, you know, it's great to pour over your hair after a shower. Wow. Yeah, it's like one of those things that'll really like get rid of all the sediment, you know, anything that's settled into your hair and it really cleans it off. It makes your hair very shiny, adds the shine. So, uh, I, but I'll invariably, I'll think, oh good, I'm gonna use it for my hair. And then I'll go, oh no, the bubbles are still there. It's still perfect. <laughs> so it really does hang on to them. So it, it, is, it makes you amazing. feel great and look great also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well said. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, but Laura, I interrupted you. What were you going to, uh, what were you going to say? I'm just gonna say I'd rather drink in than put it on my hair, but I mean those are both yeah. great uses yeah. and a great beauty tip. Yeah. It makes you feel beautiful in many ways. Yes. It is. Absolutely. It is such a delicious drink. I really think that people are gonna fall in love with this one. It's so it just has so many bursts, little bursts of just delightful it's delightful right like it's like oh, yes. I just love it and so what you know what's what's next for you you've, you've done so many things um in your in your career in your life you're such an inspiration like what what's still on your list of things you want to accomplish well now we're going to make bellissima popsicles <laughs> Isn't that um, great? And we're gonna do, we're gonna have all kinds of wonderful, delicious flavors. So that's coming soon. And, wow. and they'll be the kind of thing that like, we can turn it upside down and just drop it into the glass and then, you know, have it and drink it. And yeah, I mean, it's just good. They're gonna be great. Um, and I have lots of ideas 
for that branch that we're doing with um, a lot of good ideas for it. So I was very excited about that. And that should be coming soon, hopefully, you know, this summer. And wow. uh, yeah, so- So kind uh, of an adult popsicle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're working on, we're working on lots of surprising things that uh, I think people are really going to love. So I'm very excited about our future lineup of very, uh, fun things. Yeah. Very exciting. All right. Well, I will be sure to be on the lookout for that this summer. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I wanted to kick it over to you. I know that you um, were fielding some questions in the chat, the Q and A, and I'm sure you have. I've been, I've been just monopolizing Christy's time here, so I'm sure you have. <laughs> As you <laughs> should. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Christy, people want to know where you sell um, your wine. In addition to the website and on Wine Access, um, what shops, what restaurants, what markets? Yes, Where can we buy you know, this? that that has been the hardest thing for us has been, um, I have people asking me all the time, I, I love it, I, I had it someplace, but now I can't find it. But we have just, like, we've just hired on somebody that's specific in our company that is going to be making sure that our distribution network gets settled and gets out there and we are already seeing such huge results that I think it's gonna be easier and easier to find. Um, we also have a program on our website right now that if you have a store down the street from you, a favorite liquor store, and you want it to be there, you just fill out the form and we'll get it to that store. You know, So you can just, uh, that's right on our site. We wanna make it easy for you because I know people have, have worked way too hard to get their hands on our belief Simon. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna make it, we're gonna have it everywhere. Um, here in the Hamptons, I always tell people, people always say, whether it's in a, a magazine interview or in, you know, just people calling up and saying, I'm coming out, where to, what restaurant should I go to? I said, just, if the restaurant looks cute, just call them up and ask if they carry the Bellissima, if they do, you know it's a restaurant that I love, that I frequent. Um, um, like Tutto Il Giorno in, in Sag Harbor, uh, they've got my like American Hotel. They have a great uh, wine collection. One of the, the biggest in the Hamptons, I think they have the biggest wine cellar and, um, and they carry my Bellissima and uh, more and more restaurants. I mean, a lot of restaurants, um, uh, I know here, I know um, in Los Angeles, in Las Vegas, uh, because those are all places where we've had events personally. And, uh, you know, um, and I know that we're, the marketplace is getting better established there, but we're in almost every state. We're in several different countries now. And um, we've got lots of big plans. And I, as I say, we're, we're, our goal now is to make it really easy for you to get your hands on our Bellissima. You can always get it. I also make appearances regularly on QVC and QVC um, is able to give really great uh, special offers. Uh, which um, I'm always happy when we can do that because it makes it really accessible for everybody. And, um, and then we also have our own website where we have it, but it's uh, obviously it's more economical to get it at a store, you know, than to uh, get it delivered. But, but it's very convenient to get it delivered because we, we can deliver it right to your door. But um, you know, as I say, that part of the equation is changing every day. I'm so happy to report that um, we're we're going to be um, really easy to find, easier and easier every day now. That's fantastic. 
And then we have Sherman who has a, an interesting question. He wants to know um, what your thoughts are on Lambrusco um, being it's an Italian wine and is there anything comparable in your catalog? You know, I have to admit, I really am not familiar with the Lambrusco. I know the name, but I can't, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't want to pretend like I've been so into my wines <laughs> that I haven't been when I go to Italy right now, I have not been like trying different things. I've been trying different Proseccos, but a Lambrusco, I can't really, you know, I can't really say. Well, Vanessa, you may know if, if having tasted mine, uh, if there's something comparable. Um, so often Lambrusco will be, is, it's, a, it's a sparkling wine from Italy as well, but often it's red. Um, there is pink, uh, excuse me, pink Lambrusco. So you can find um, ones that will look more this color. Um, but often it's red, but something actually s similar is when we were talking previously, Christy, about kind of the way that Prosecco has changed in terms of it used to be very, always very sweet uh, yeah. in the market. It's similar with Lambrusco that um, for a long time, what was being uh, imported into the United States would be the same. It was very sweet, it, you know, and, and sort of cloying, but now, you know, you'll be able to find these dry Prosecco, or excuse me, dry Lambruscos in the market, just like just like Prosecco. Uh, so it's it's similar in that regard. Yeah. And, and very, also very food friendly, um, like these Proseccos are as well. Well, thank you. Yegis, <laughs> Yegis wants to know uh, on a similar kind of vein, if there's a Francia Corta um, or perhaps even a Champagne coming in the future, which I'm gathering the Champagne would be a little hard because it's a different region. So what are your yeah, thoughts exactly. there? Well, you know, as as you know, champagne comes from Champagne in France, <laughs> and um, and prosecco comes from the region of Veneto, and so you cannot grow champagne in Veneto, um, but there are proseccos that taste very champagne like. Um, I know I I think that my zero sugar and my brut could sometimes be mistaken for certain champagnes, especially when served very, very icy cold. Um, they have a bit of that, they, they really taste very champagne-like to me in um, not all champagnes, but certain ones like, I think like more like a Dom Perignon, it, I think that my zero sugar has a little bit of that vibe in it. I really do. Um, uh, other ones that have more of like a burnt thing in it, like a Roterer. I love their uh, champagnes. I think that um, like, I love Cristal and I love the uh, flowery, um, what's that one? Um, oh, I can't think of it, but those ones that have like almost a, a kind of a burnt flavor in there. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's almost like, burnt caramel or something like on a creme yeah. brulee in the, the kind of like sort of like marzipani um yeah kind of. notes to it mm -hmm. yeah that kind of thing like that little edge um that I don't think that you can really uh uh make something taste quite like that except from the region where that's made <laughs> that's but that's my well, the feeling. La the last question would be, what are your favorite desserts to uh, eat with each of these different Proseccos? Uh, well, I would say, I would have to say, I mean, hmm, I think that they're absolutely great with any kind of like, sorbetto you know you if you have like a lemon sorbet and you just dump your glass right on it and it bubbles and froths and it's just or you just put it right in there uh drop a little ball right into your glass that is fantastic uh and um i think any kind of tart you know uh is also an amazing thing to have a little bit of the crust, the little fruit, 
a little sip. Mm, my mouth's watering just <laughs> thinking of it. Um, I mean, uh, I'm definitely an ice cream person. Like that's why I can't be vegan because every now and then ice cream it, like finds its way. <laughs> like <laughs> that's, that's really ice cream and mozzarella are the two things that keep me from being a vegan. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, life is too short and one must enjoy. And so I will always have that uh, little temptation there. Have you ever tried Prosecco and ice cream mixed together? I wonder what that's like. I haven't. I bet it could be pretty good. I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> And I think that's a wonderful way to end on our very happy, beautiful tasting note. Um, life is short, enjoy Prosecco. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Christy, thank you so much. Vanessa and Wine Access, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Um, yes, thank cheers you both to so you much. Both. Cheers. And cheers to everyone watching cheers. at home. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to enjoying the moment. <laughs> enjoying the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. <laughs> to the moment. Cheers. And a bellissima life. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And dream yes. a big bellissima dreams and may they all come true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you again. Bye. Thank you, Bye. you guys. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>